Okay, the thing that uh, we're going to discuss this morning is uh, mentioned in this week's parasha. Parashat Shavuot is Parashat Kitisa. In <coughs> this parasha, Parashat Kitisa is one of the five parashiot in the Torah that speaks about the Mishkan. The Mishkan meaning the, to build the first Beit HaMikdash that was actually the temporary one that was going with with us in the 40 years in the in the desert <coughs> so when Hashem commanded uh, Moshe Rabbeinu to put together the Mishkan uh, it says something very interesting even though the Mishkan is very very important because you know this is the house of God I mean the Real Beit Hamikdash will be in Yerushalayim much later. That will be Beit Hamikdash. But the Mishkan is, Hashem says, "Ve'asuli Mishkan ve'shachan ve'asuli Mikdash ve'shachanti betucham." I want to dwell within you, within the nation. So make this Mishkan. And in order to do the Mishkan, we need a very, very special person who could know the secrets. Because the Mishkan was not just a building, not just a structure. It was a reflection of the creation. The Gemara in Masechet Brachot says that Betzalel, Betzalel ben Uri ben Chur, in order to do the Mishkan, Hashem revealed to him the secrets of how Hashem created the world. Yodea Aya Betzalel, the Gemara says that Betzalel knew the secrets of the letters in the Hebrew language. We have 22 letters. And he knew the secrets of the letters. He knew how to combine them in a way Hashem did the same thing when he created the universe. Yodea Aya Betzalel Tzaref Otiyot Shenivreu Bahem Shamayim Vaaretz. And Hashem give him a lot of wisdom. And actually in the word of the Pasuk, Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu, you know, not you will be in charge. Bezalel will be in charge. And he was very, very young at the time, this Bezalel. But Hashem give him the, the gifts. Chokhmah Bina Vadat, the initials of Chabad. Chokhmah Bina Vadat. And actually, if you know, it's the highest level of the Sfirot. We have 10... We have, there, there, there are, there is, a, there is a difference between Chokhmah, Bina, and Dat. I'll explain maybe later. So Hashem gave him Chokhmah, Bina, and Dat. And those are, was the tools, as it's mentioned in the Kabbalah book called Sefer Yetzirah, a book of creation. This is a Kabbalah book that explained that Hashem created the world, the entire universe, with those three things. Chokhmah, Bina, and Dat. So Hashem gave it to Bezalel and he said to Moshe Rabbeinu, there is only one person who could do this. Re'e karati b'shem. I, I give him this ability. Shem is a name. Name is, a, is actually the definition of the person, of, of the one who get the name. So the name of Bezalel is Bezalel. Bezalel, if you took the letters, five letters, and those letters are part of the Thing that was behind the creation of the human being. When Hashem created Adam, it says, just a second. When Hashem created Adam Arishon, the first man, it says that Hashem created him Betzelem Elohim. Betzelem Elohim. So if you take the first three letters of Betzelem without the mem, that's Betzel, and then Elohim. Aleph Lamed, this is Betzalel. Betzalel was the one that has the spiritual characters of what human being in the beginning was created. And the human being was created in the, in the image of God. So you have to, if you put together all of this, you understand that Betzalel was the only one who has the tools to do the building of the Mishkan. Yeah, what did, what did you want to say before? 
I just have to explain. Okay. So Betzalel are the letters of Betzalel are two. It's Betzalem Elokim. Now, in order to do the Mishkan, Betzalel has to knows as, as I mentioned before the secrets of the connection between the heaven, the Shamaim Va'aretz, the secrets of the connection between the Neshama and the and the body. And Hashem gave us details how to build the Mishkan. And yet, in this week's parasha, let me quote for you a few psukim from this week's parasha. Vayomer Hashem el Moshe lemor, v'ata daber el Bnei Yisrael. Hashem says to Moshe, you speak and tell Bnei Yisrael lemor. Ach et shabetotai tishmor. Even though to build the Mishkan, a house for Hashem, is so important and so in high priorities, but there is something above it in the priority, which is Shabbat. No doing the Mishkan and the Shabbat, even though you stop. I mean, when Shabbat comes, you are not doing anything for the Mishkan. So what's, what's more important? The Shabbat. And Hashem give us over here a few psukim, that two of them are very famous because we're saying them every Shabbat. In the Kiddush and in the Tefillah, let me write, just read and explain the few psukim over here. This in the middle, when he giving in the details how to build the Mishkan, he says, Shabbat, you have to keep. Even when you're busy with the, with the building the Mishkan, when, come, when Shabbat comes, stop everything. Why? Why? Because Hashem explains over here why Shabbat is so important. Because Shabbat is the ot, the sign, the covenant between Hashem, between Hashem, Hashem talking, between me and you. For your generations to the end of days. So since I gave you this mitzvah, it's Applied to the history. So what is the sign? Well, what's so important about the Shabbat? It's the sign. It's the covenant. It's, it's a contract. We have a contract between us and Hashem. And we have to keep it. We have to keep it even when we are busy with the mitzvah of building the Mishkan. Ladat ki ani Hashem ekadishchem. Now the, the next pasuk says something very, very serious about Shabbat. We have to explain it, and so I will read it and explain it. Ushmartem et Shabbat ki kol yeshilachem. You have to keep the Shabbat because it's holy for you. Mechalelea mot yumat. Anyone who disgrace the Shabbat, who does not make the Shabbat holy, it's a death penalty. Mechalelea mot yumat, death penalty. Anyone who do any work, and it's applied to all generations, since we got the mitzvah during the history. The, the Torah speaks about something that needs explanation called karet. Karet is cut off. Cut off this neshama, this person, a Jew. Who do melacha b'shabbat? His his soul cut off me'amea from the, the the nation from amea from their its nation, meaning there is something called the Jewish nation. The Jewish nation. It's like a tree. In the Kabbalah, it's explained. It's like a tree. They have a tree with a lot of branches, leaves. All this called in the Kabbalah the Ilan shel klal nishmot Israel. The tree that includes all the neshamot of the Jewish nation. There are few mitzvot in the Torah, not just Shabbat, few mitzvot in the Torah, very, very important mitzvot, very, that if someone not keeping them, only about few of them it says this thing, that his soul got cut off from the, tr from the tree of the Jewish nation. Shabbat is one of them. Now we have to explain what is the meaning of this, why so, why it's so severe, why it's so... And what is the meaning of doing or not doing melacha? Okay? Now, 
The Torah continue. Sheshet yamim yaseh melacha. You need to work fine. Six days. Sheshet yamim. Only six days yaseh melacha. Uvyom shabbat shabbat shabbaton kodesh laHashem. You have to be shabbat is to stop doing lishbot shvita. If you know Hebrew, shvita is to just don't do. Don't do whatever you do. Whatever you do, stop. After six days, you will stop for one day for Shabbat. Shabbat, Shabbaton, Kodesh, Lashem. And again, the Torah repeats. It's a death penalty. Why? Why it's so severe? We'll explain. Now here, the last two psukim are the famous psukim that we quote every Shabbat a few times in the Kiddush, in the, in the, in the praying, in the tefillah. V'shamru b'nei Yisrael et ha-Shabbat la'asot et ha-Shabbat l'dorotam brit olam. Now, the words are famous, but let me explain them. V'shamru b'nei Yisrael et ha-Shabbat. The mitzvah of Shabbat is exclusive mitzvah to the Jewish nation. As you know, if you know, if not, you will know now, the Torah was not given just to us. Hashem gave Torah to the entire world. All the goyim, all the, gen, uh, the, the gentiles in the world has seven mitzvot. Sheva mitzvot bnei noach. Seven mitzvot for non-Jews. Shabbat is not one of the sheva, uh, sheva mitzvot of the non-Jews. They have mitzvot, but not Shabbat. Shabbat is exclusive beini uven bnei Israel, Between Hashem and the Jewish nation only. Only the Jewish nation. Now it's here it's repeat, the Torah repeated, Veshamru Bnei Israel et a Shabbat. Only the Jews should keep Shabbat. And if you know, if you have a Gentile that want to convert, we're teaching them the entire Torah, but they are not allowed to keep Shabbat until they, they complete their process of converting. Because when you are non-Jew, you are not allowed to keep Shabbat. The Gemara says, Ovet kochavim sheshamar Shabbat, chayav mita. A Jew, the same way that a Jew who not keep Shabbat, chayav mita, death, and the opposite, goy sheshamar Shabbat, chayav mita. Now, we have to understand, what is this? Why mita? Why death? And what's the idea? So there is something very deep in this. I want to try to get to it. Again, Veshamru Bnei Yisrael et ha-Shabbat. Now, be aware of the next two words. La'asot et ha-Shabbat. What's la'asot? To do. What do you have to do? Shabbat is Shabbat. After six days, come Shabbat. You do not have to do anything to make Shabbat. Shabbat is there. What's the meaning of la'asot et ha-Shabbat? Ledorotam brit olam. Ledorotam, again the Torah repeat. It's not something that was good for the past. It's for the generation everlasting to the end of days. Let Dorotam, Brit Olam, to the entire time that the world will exist. And what is the Brit? The Brit is the covenant. There is a covenant between us and Hashem manifest, manifest in Shabbat. And the Torah explains why. בני ובן בני ישראל לא תהיה לעולם, כי ששת ימים עשה השם את השמיים ואת הארץ, וביום השביעי שבת, שבת ואי נפש. Why Hashem command us to do the Shabbat? Because the fact was that Hashem created the world, and He created the world in the six days of the creation, and then in the seventh day, He not, He didn't do anything. He Shabbat in Kol Nachto. Therefore, Hashem command us to do this every week, every week. And now let's try to explain a little bit what is the meaning of the covenant between us and God, okay? There's something very, very important. <clears throat> As you know, God is not a human being. God is not physical. We are, I mean, we have body, we have also a spiritual dimension, which is the neshama, but we have body. And when you ask someone, who are you? The first thing is, me is me. What do you mean me? Me is, is my body, but it's not just my body. My body and my neshama. I, be aware the, to the fact that we do not see our neshama. In our five senses, our five senses are physical. 
they give us access to the physical dimension of the universe. So we could not see with our eyes, hear with our ears, feel in, with our hands spiritual things. And our neshama is not physical. I could not see your neshama. I could not see my neshama. Neshama is something spiritual. And the neshama is something that Hashem created. So the creator himself, for sure, is above physical. He created the physical and the spiritual. And therefore, it's hard for people to relate to God as something real. Some people believe in God. But is God real? Is it real in your life? Because you do not see it with your eyes, and you feel it, you, you have, sometimes you know that there is God, but you forget about it when you do your things, your life, you're running your life. So Hashem gave us many, many, and this is actually the basic of all the mitzvot in the Torah. The entire mitzvot, all the mitzvot is to take physical things and give them spiritual meaning. When you, when you eat something, or you drink something, you say bracha on it. You know, animals eat and drink. They do not say bracha. They do not know what, how to say and what to say. And even people who say bracha, some people just say words and those words mean nothing to them. They do not understand what they're doing. But what is the bracha? The bracha is to give this food or this drink spiritual meaning. All the mitzvot are actually a training process of us to teaching us or, or, or training us to relate to ourselves not just as physical entities because we have neshama. So you could eat in the physical realm like animals. Animals have body. If they need to eat, they eat. We have also body, and we need to eat. So human being could eat like an animal. In order to eat like as a human being, the difference between human being and animal is The only difference between a human being and the animal is the neshama. But again, we do not see our neshama, so it's easy to ignore it. So the Torah teaches us by all the mitzvot that we're doing, that everything that you do in the physical realm, give it, add to it the spiritual dimension of it, which is the bracha. Because the bracha, what I say, I, I gave this example many times, I'll give it again. When you take a cup of water, right, and you say bracha, think about the words. What do you say? You take a cup of water. Every cat, every dog who needs to drink, drink water. When I want to drink the water, I before I, I, I put it in my mouth, I say, Baruch Ata, Hashem, Elokeinu, our God, Melech HaOlam, the King of the Universe, Shehakol Nihiyah Bidvaro. That everything that exists, including me, including everything around me, was because he said it. Ki hu amar vayehi, Shehakol Nihiyah Bidvaro. Everything is here because he created it. So what I'm doing actually, I'm just drink, drinking water. Before I'm drinking water, I'm reminding myself that I'm not just physical. That the physical world around me is part of a bigger <laughs> thing, which is physical and spiritual. And that every mitzvah that we do, every mitzvah we're taking physical things, put into it spiritual meaning, Shabbat is the most amazing thing. Every six days, every six days, we as Jews, taking one day every week and make it holy, make it devoted to the spiritual dimension. Shabbat Kodesh. Kadosh is holy. What is the definition of of Kedusha of holiness. You know, under the chuppah, when Jews got married, 
the husband says to the wife, Hare at mekudeshetli. What is this? Kedusha. Well, what's the connection? Well, what's Kedusha? Kedusha is holiness. What holiness? Until now, we were two independent person, people. We could do whatever we... Now we're getting to be connected, but this connection is not a business connection. It's a holy connection. It's a spiritual connection. We're going to build a house in the Jewish nation. We're going to build a house. Be'ezrat Hashem, we're going to have children and we will give them the Torah that we got from our parents and our parents from other parents from until Muhammad al Sinai. And we're going to build a holy house that we're going to continue to pass the Torah, to pass the spiritual message, the spiritual meaning of the world. Shabbat is also Kadosh. It's the same thing. Like you said to, when you got married, you say, I got Mekudesh at least. Shabbat is Kedusha. And as you know, we sang before Shabbat come, we sang Lechadodi. What's Lechadodi? Likrat? Likrat Kala. Nachon? Pnei Shabbat Nekabla. Shabbat is Kala. It's like, it's like a Kala. It's like a, it's like a husband and a wife. But here we're talking about the nation. The Jewish nation get married to the Shabbat. We accepting the Shabbat. Like the Chatan goes likrat kala, goes to, toward the kala, we going toward the Shabbat. We accepting the Shabbat. So what's the idea of Shabbat? Shabbat is to remind ourselves that this world is more complicated than we think when we could feel in our senses. This world has a spiritual dimension. And this spiritual dimension is once a week, the Shabbat. When Shabbat comes, we do Kiddush. We make it Kadosh, holy. When Shabbat ends, we do Havdalah. Havdalah is separation between what and what? Between the Kodesh and the Chol. We start in our regular day. But now, one day, we have a chance to live in the spiritual dimension in the universe. This is Shabbat. Now Hashem says, let's go back to our parasha. Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu, listen, I commanded you to build a mishkan, to build a house for God. It's a big, big thing. When Shabbat will come, you tell Bezalel, you tell all the Jews, stop, do any work for the mishkan. Because the mishkan is important. Shabbat is more important. Now let me explain something very deep about this. In order for any physical things to exist in the world, Hashem created frames in order to this physical entities, any physical entities to be, to be in. There are two realms, two, two frames. One frame is a space. You know, we need space for any physical things to exist. It needs space. The other thing, he created another frame called time. Time and space. Without time, without space, any physical things could not exist. So in order for the physical things to exist, we need space and we need time. What is the space? The entire universe is in space. Not just Earth, all the stars, all the galaxies. They, they are in space that could hold them. Aside from the space, we have time. Now, be aware of the following. The Gemara, the, actually it's a Mishnah. The Mishnah says the following. Eretz Israel, the land of Israel, Kedosha Mikol Aratzot. There is something, again, we talked about Kedusha before, which is holiness. There is a place, place in the world, in the universe, that has Kedusha in it. What is this place? Eretz Israel. Eretz Israel is the most holy land in the entire world, in the entire universe. Now, but the Gemara says that there are 10 Kedushot, 10 levels of holiness. Eretz Israel, Kedusha Mikol Aratzot. Yerushalayim, Kedusha Mikol Eretz Israel. This is higher level of Kedusha inside Israel, 
So you have the land of Israel, but you have Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim קדושה מכל ארץ ישראל. הר הבית קדוש מכל ירושלים. And then you go, inner and inner you go to Beit HaMikdash, the other outer walls, the inner walls, the, the, the Azara, the Hechal, the Ulam, and Kodesh HaKodashim. Kodesh HaKodashim is the Holy of Holies. What's Kodesh HaKodashim? It's the place where Hashem dwelt in, in, the, in the world. So that makes it holy. So we learn now about the holiness in place. Remember we have two dimensions of the universe. Space and time. What's the most holy place, place in the world? Yerushalayim, Bet HaMikdash, Kodesh HaKodashim. Now let's go to the time frame. In the time frame, we have also part of the time that is holy. This is Shabbat. Six days are mundane, regular. Shabbat is holy. So Shabbat is the holiness in time. Bet HaMikdash is holiness in place. Place. Now we got both. The Jewish nation got the Shabbat and got Bet HaMikdash. Unfortunately, one of them is destroyed. We have no Bet HaMikdash. Right? Every Tisha B'Av, we still mourning about Bet HaMikdash. Three times a day in Tefillat Shemona Yisrael, we pray to Hashem that He will rebuild Yerushalayim. In Birkat Amazon, we said, Bone Yerushalayim. We know that Hashem, Hashem promised that He's going to build Yerushalayim. Build Yerushalayim meaning build Bet HaMikdash. But many, many years, we do not have Yerushalayim. We do not have Bet HaMikdash. Until now, we do not have Bet HaMikdash. So we lost the holiness in the place. And yet, we never lost, chas v'chalila, the holiness on time. Even after the Goyim destroyed Bet HaMikdash, they could not destroy the Shabbat. Shabbat is with us whenever we go. When we are a nation in Eretz Israel and when we are in exile, Shabbat is always there. So you see over here that between space and time, between the holy in space and the holy in time, the holy in time is bigger. As Hashem said to Bezalel, to Moshe, you, when they start to build Beit HaMikdash, Hashem said, build Beit HaMikdash, sheshet yamim. Ach, et shabbatotai tishmor. Shabbat, no building Beit HaMikdash. Because the holiness in time is higher than the holiness in place. So from this, we could understand a little bit why Shabbat is so... I mean, we see, obviously, that it's higher. Now, let's try to explain why it's so, so important, the holiness of time, which is Shabbat. As I said, we could not bring Korbanot today, we do not have Bet HaMikdash. We could not do Korban Pesach, we could not do a lot of things because we do not have Bet HaMikdash. But Shabbat, we could. Shabbat is here, Shabbat is there, Shabbat is everywhere. During the history, let's explain this a little bit. I mentioned before that it's, Hashem is not physical. So you could not see in your flesh eyes or feel with your physical senses. Therefore, Hashem says, you, the Jewish nation, will be my witnesses in the world that I created the world. Every few days, you will stand in front of the entire world and give a testimony about the fact that I gave, that I created the world. And this is Shabbat. In Shabbat, all the Jews, all over the world, standing, declaring, giving a testimony, Hashem created the world in six days and he stopped doing it in the seventh days and we are his representative. Thank you. And we are the witness of this. Now any Jew, and we accept this on us to be the witness of Hashem, to be 
אתם עדיי, says the נביא ישעיהו, אתם עדיי נאום השם, you are my witnesses. And we accept on ourselves as a nation, when we said נעשה ונשמע, we said we accepting this. So here you could, you could understand why it's so so important. A Jew that has v'shalom not keeping Shabbat. And I'll explain later, there are people who do not know about Shabbat. They do not know how, how much important it is. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about a Jew who knows what Judaism is all about. A Jew who knows what's important about Shabbat. And yet, he not keeping Shabbat. You know what he says? And that's what makes it so severe? Hashem didn't exist. Hashem didn't create the world. When you're standing and say, I'm keeping Shabbat. Why I'm keeping Shabbat? To give a testimony that Hashem is the master of the universe. So someone who do not keep Shabbat is actually denying God. He denying God as a creator. He denying God. And this is your mission as a Jew. So if you ask a Jew standing and not saying that Hashem created the world, you're saying that Hashem didn't create the world or Hashem does not exist at all. In other words, Someone who not keeping a Jew who is not keeping Shabbat is kofer bakadosh baruch hu. Is is mamash is 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 this is the most severe thing. That's why it's a death penalty. Mechalele amot yomat not today. Not. What is this? Most of the Jews that not keeping Shabbat. Yeah, yeah. I said. Wait, wait, wait. And now I'm talking about the principles. You're right. You're right. No, the question is. Let, let me explain. Let me explain. If it's not able to explain I'll, when I finish, then you could. Yes, I repeat. I, I read it a few times. Now, we have to explain this. This is applied only, only when it was Beta Mikdash and it was Sanhedrin, which is the Supreme Court of the Jewish nation, in Yerushalayim in Beta Mikdash. And this is applied only, again, it's very important to, to be aware of those details. It's applied only to Jews who knows that there is Hashem, who knows that Hashem gave us the Torah, and they do it on purpose. Only those are obligated or in, at the time when Bet HaMikdash was there, and it was Sanhedrin, they, they, if they did it on purpose, when people want them, you know, all the process, it's a death penalty. It's a death penalty. Today the situation is completely different. First of all, we do not have Sanhedrin. We do not have Bet HaMikdash. Therefore, there is no such a thing as a death penalty that any Jewish court could, could, could do. But you have to know, the Torah says two things. If someone did it with Edim and Atra'a at the time when Bet HaMikdash came, it's a death penalty. But, even at the time of Bet HaMikdash, when it was a Supreme Court and was the authority to put people to death, if there is no Edim or no Hatra'ah, no, no witness to, witnesses who warn the, 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 the person, don't do it. But he did it anyways, without Edim. So there is something else that Torah mentioned over here. It's called Karet. This is not any... This, this punishment is so severe, you do not need a court to do it. Hashem is doing it. Hashem is doing it meaning his soul got cut off from the Jewish nation. And this is applied even today. Because we do not need court for this. This is what Hashem doing. So even today, a Jews, Jews, I, I'm, I'm just making it very clear. Jews who know that there is Hashem, who knows that he gave the Torah, who knows that the Torah says, don't do Melacha in Shabbat, and do it on purpose, they are pun will be punished, Chaz v'shalom, if they do not do tshuva, in karet, v'nichreta nefeshayim ha'amea. So the death penalty is still there, but it's not by court, but by Hashem. So we have to be aware of this. Now, it's applied only to people who knows that they are Jewish, who knows that today is Shabbat, who knows what not allowed in Shabbat and do it anyways, those apply to this karet. Today, we do not have 
as we said, Bet HaMikdash, we do not have Sanhedrin. And we have another big, big problem. Many, many Jews do not know that they're Jewish. They do not know what Judaism is, means. Even if they know that they're Jewish, they do not know that Hashem gives Torah and Sinai. And even if they know that Hashem gives Torah and Sinai, they said, so who said that this is not allowed and this is not allowed? They do not know about the Melachot of Shabbat. They do not know what's right and what's wrong. Therefore, therefore, anyone who really do not know is not a Mezid, is not doing it on purpose, is doing it because they do not know. It's not make it good, but it's less severe. It's less severe. The fact is that out of the 13 million Jews that we have in the world today, approximately, maybe 2 million, out of the 13 million, maybe 2 million are keeping Shabbat. The rest either do not know that they're Jewish, or they know but they do not care, or they do not know what Judaism is all about. What is it? They think they're Jewish. very good Jews because they do that and they do that. They never learn. They never learn Torah. They never learn Torah from the right sources. And many of them just was misled by funny rabbis. I'm talking about reform, conservatives, all these funny jokes that told them that it's right and this right and this okay and that okay. So many of them just mis mislead and they do not know. It doesn't make them okay, but they are not doing it on purpose. They are not mezid. Mezid is someone who knows and he yet do it anyways. So when the Torah speaks about death penalty or karet even for someone who been halal Shabbat, is for someone who knows, someone who doesn't know, it's called in the Torah like a Jew that the goyim, terrorist, captured and raised them when he was a kid among them. So he never knew what's right, what's wrong, what Judaism, what not Judaism, and this is the situation today. As I mentioned before, we have 13 million Jews in the world. About maybe 10, 000, 10 millions of them. One three. One three. That's it. That's it. We're very, very small. We have, we have about approximately five and a half million in Israel and six million in America. And the rest are all over the world. This is it. This is it. And out of this small number, 13 million, maybe 2 million keeping Shabbat. The others are Tinokot Shenishbu. They are like the children that were captured and raised with wrong ideas. It could be even in the Israeli education system. As you know, many of the teachers who teach Torah, teach Torah like uh, it's a fairy tale. It's not something real. So they capture their mind. They make them not understanding that Judaism is serious, that Torah is true. So again, it's not led them to do what they do. It's not, they are not okay, but they are not mezidim. They are not doing it on purpose. So what we have to do, we have to learn the Torah, we have to teach our brothers and sisters the Torah. You cannot just say, you know, I, I know I, I'm, I'm okay. What about your brothers and your sister? You have to know all the Jews are, are connected to each other. We know if Chas Shalom, in any place in the world, we hear that any Jew is in danger. All Jewish hearts of all the Jews all over the world are, are, are worried about him. We, we have connection between us. And we, do not, we could not be indifferent. You know, we could not say it's not my business, it's their business. Of course, you could not force anyone. It's not the right way, and it's, a, it's not going to work. But you could talk. You could make kiruv. You put people being, make them close to Judaism. Teach them the Torah. Teach them the beauty. Teach them the mission. Let them be a proud Jew. Because, you know, we are the nation of God. We have to be proud of it. Hashem chose us, as we said, Asher bachar banu mikol amin. He chose us from all the nations of the world. And we are not big in numbers. We are not. 
But some chose because we are the, son, the children of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. And Hashem made from them this nation, the Jewish nation. And the Jewish nation is in exile. And exile is not just the fact that they are not in their land. They are not in their state, in their place, in, in, the, in the level that they should be. This is exile. And we could do a lot in order to bring another Jew, another Jew. My, if I look at every Jew as my dear brother, my dear sister, I could not, if I see Hasve Shalom, my dear brother or my dear sister going to drugs or going to, to, to something dangerous, I will do everything to convince them to get in the right way. So when you see Jews that not because they're wicked, but because they do not know, they give up Judaism. They're going with goyim, they eat non-kosher, they do things that are not right. And we have to understand the, the price that we pay as a nation. We're losing Jews every day. We're losing intermarriage. We're losing them. And we had enough. You know, as nation, we suffer so much from the goyim. That killing us in every generation, as we're going to say in Lela Seder, Shebechol Dor Vador Amdim Aleinu Lechalotim. And it was the Nazis at the time, 70 years ago, it's the Arabs today. And if you look at the history, Shebechol Dor Vador. Every generation, there are some Gentile anti Semites who decide to take the Jews and erase them from the Wipe them out from, from, from out, uh, under the sky. So we could help. We could let our people get lost. It's our responsibility to, to, to save each Jew. And saving is not just from gas chambers. To save them from being, getting lost and stop being Jewish. Therefore, we have to learn Torah, and we have to teach Torah. And the Torah is so beauty. There is such a beauty in the Torah. It's so beautiful. It's not just important. It's beautiful. It has a lot of de depth, a lot of chokhmah, a lot of wisdom. And if someone keep the way of Torah, it's guaranteed. If, if they keep the, the way of Torah the way the Torah said it, it's guaranteed. That will be a great relationship between a husband and wife. If both of them will keep what they should keep. Amazing relationship between parents and children. Amazing relationship in the community. Amazing relationship with the nation in general. If we will do what's right. All the problems that you know or you, you face is because we do not do what's right. If we will do follow the directions, the instruction of God, we will all be good, we'll be great. We'll not be good, we'll be great. But we have to be connected to the source of life, the source of right way to manage our life. So in this week, Parsha, we learned that Bet HaMikdash is very important to make a place for Hashem to dwell among us. It's, a, it's so important. What's more important than that? Shabbat. In Shabbat, stop do everything. Don't build. Hashem says, I don't need you to build me a house if that includes Hilul Shabbat. In Shabbat, stop. Wait until Motzei Shabbat do. So what that says to us? Today. Today. Today, Baruch Hashem. You know, in the history of the Jewish nation, was periods of time that the goyim or the anti-Semite didn't let Jew, Jews to practice Judaism. It was a death penalty. The, the, there were decrees to eat, to eat non-kosher, to not keep Shabbat. The, the goyim always made decrees. They, they do not want the Jew to perform Judaism. Today we are here in America. And actually, in most places of the world, we have freedom. We could do, no one forced us to do anything. So if we could, and no one forced us, why we should not do it? 
Why we could not do it? You know why? Because we are still in exile. Our mind captured in the exile. We are in the culture of the going around. And everyone, you know, on Shabbat is a regular day. People going in their car, going for trips, you know, using the fact that they are not working. So Jews see that and say, why not me? And if we will understand that you will have much more fun, real fun, real meaningful fun, keeping Shabbat the way Hashem commanded you to do, than any trip that you could do in, in Shabbat. Than any music that you could, you need music? Sing around the table. Sing Zmichot Shabbat. Be with your family. Be connected to your children, to your wife, to your, to your husband. You know, Shabbat, with, without anything else, is the most amazing thing. You know, in America, when you could find an American non-Jewish family, non-Jewish family, American, eating together. Thanksgiving. We have Thanksgiving three times each Shabbat. If we will do it right. And you know what's the benefit of this? People today in the technology era are so lonely. So lonely with all the technology. Oh, you know, because of the technology. People could sit together, family, sitting in the same room. But the kids with his iPad, the father with the TV, the mother with something, with a phone. And they're in the same room, but they're so separated. They're so not connected. In Shabbat, you have no choice. No TV, no cell phone, nothing. So what do you have to do? Talk to each other. Make connection. Sing together. When you see people, you know when people sing together, it's such an amazing togetherness. And when you sing not just stupid song, but song of meanings, songs of, of, of Kedusha, when your children come and say Dvar Torah that they learned in school, you feel so great, you know. My children speaks about Judaism ide Jewish ideas. We have a, a live Jewish life. And the more the kids will be understanding that the parents appreciate it, they will internalize it. And they will give it to their children. And this is the way the Jewish nation passed the history with all the tough journey that we had, with all the decrees that we have all over the world. But Judaism is still alive. Where? Only among those who keep Shabbat and keep the mitzvot. So it's very important. There is a lot of yetzerara, a lot of, of temptation not to do it. But if you pay, will pay attention to what we learned today about the importance of Shabbat and the benefit of it, that could be, you know, the other, the balance between the temptation not to do versus to be connected to the nation, to be proud to be Jewish, to make sure that your children will understand how important it is, it is and will pass it to the next generation. Because you know, how, how hard is it for parents, even if they are not, you know, when they heard this um, terrible, terrible news that their children told them, I'm going to marry who? A non-Jew. This is, you know, people could collapse. What? what? What are you doing to me? You mean that you're going to be the last Jew in my family? You mean that my grandchildren are going to be non-Jews? The only way, I, I, I know it's, ho it's hard to hear, but I have to tell you that's very clear. The only way to prevent such a bad news is to give your children the right education. And education is not what you're telling them, not what you preach to them. They are very smart, the Jewish kids. They see how do you relate to what you say. If you're serious about it, they know it's real. If you just say things and do the opposite, you taught them that it's not serious. And the result will be your grandchildren will not be Jewish. So it's serious. So hopefully, Bezrat Hashem, this shiurim that you heard over here, 
that you from me and from the others I understand that over here every week you have shiurim and you have tehillim and you have connection to Judaism thank to Ilana thank, you. thank all the ladies and to thank all of you you have to know that's the only way to be connected and the way to be this is so vital so so important because the future of the Jewish nation is up to us if we will be connected we will understand we will be proud Jews it will continue to our children and grandchildren until Mashiach Be'ezrat Hashem will come.